This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman, with Nermeen Sheikh. The former Russian president, Dmitry Medvedev, is warning Russia may deploy nuclear weapons in the Baltic region if Sweden and Finland join NATO. Medvedev said, quote, there can be no more talk of any nuclear-free status for the Baltic. The balance must be restored. His comments come one day after the prime ministers of Sweden and Finland spoke together about the nations possibly joining NATO, a move many thought unthinkable before Russia invaded Ukraine. Finland shares an 830-mile border with Russia. This is the Finnish prime minister, Sanna Marin. We have deepened our NATO partnership until now, hand in hand with Sweden, ever since Russia illegally annexed Crimea. The difference between being a partner and being a member is very clear and will remain so. There is no other way to have security guarantees than under NATO's deterrence and common defense as guaranteed by NATO's Article 5. The Swedish Prime Minister, Magdalena Andersson, also spoke Wednesday in Stockholm. She's Sweden's first female prime minister. We have to analyze the situation to see what is best for Sweden's security for the Swedish people in this new situation. And you shouldn't rush into that. You should make it very seriously. It is the first time there is a Swedish and Finnish prime minister, both women. We go now to Salen in western Sweden, where we're joined by Agnes Hellström, president of the Swedish Peace and Arbitration Society, the country's oldest peace group. Some say it's the oldest in the world, founded in 1883. Agnes, welcome to Democracy Now! Uh, your response—I mean, this is an incredible— even seeing these two women, which is historic, they are standing there, though, saying they want to join this military alliance, NATO, if you can mm -hmm. respond. Well, the Swedish Peace and Arbitration Society, we are against the Swedish membership in NATO, and that, therefore, I'm, as a feminist, extra sad that the steps are taking so quickly now uh, towards the member membership and the main reason that that we don't we don't think it would make us safer or the world more secure it would make us part of a nuclear doctrine and our possibility to be a voice for democracy prevention and disarmament would decrease and Agnes, could you talk about whether, since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, popular public support for joining NATO has increased in Sweden, as it has in Finland, where reportedly recent polls suggest uh, almost 70 percent uh, of Finns support joining NATO? Yeah, yeah. the recent debate in Sweden has been very narrow and pro-NATO, I would say. But the polls, they have uh, still— uh, that's been made, they still don't show support from a majority of the people of Sweden. So I, I think that uh, it has been uh, growing, the support, but at the same time, it's been the only option presented to us by, by the media, more or less. And I think it's uh, really important, this kind of big decision, that it has to be a wide debate, and it has to be—the the people must be included in this kind of— really big change in, in our in our policy. Agnes Hellström, um, for people who aren't familiar with Sweden's history, if you can talk about mm. the history of neutrality and why it is so central to Sweden's identity. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember the exact year when we uh, decided on the neutrality policy. Uh, and it's also been abandoned for a more non-aligned policy, military. Uh, but uh, it's been, well, it's been a country that had peace uh, for more than 200 years. And a lot to thank has been our our choice to be more of a voice for democracy, d diplomacy and for disarmament and to, uh, in the international forum, uh, represent those uh, issues more than, than to, to take side or to, to choose an ally in that kind of way as NATO is. I guess as, as members of uh, both Finland and Sweden are, of course, members of the EU, which does grant some kind of uh, uh, protection to both states uh, in the event of any kind of military 
assault. So in other words, they do already have some security guarantees. Why then do you think that there is this uh, heightened discussion of NATO? What would NATO membership enable? Well, I think in Sweden, as in many countries right now, it's been a big amount of, of fear after the invasion of, of Ukraine. And uh, therefore, it's like the easiest it's the easiest solution that, that you join a, a military alliance that would protect you in case of war. But at the same time, war is always devastating. So we have to do everything we can to prevent war, the war spreading or just war uh, starting in, in other parts of our, our surroundings. So, so I think it's, it's, a, it's a reflex that you choose that because it's the easiest way. But at the same time, we have to use this really wide palette of, of uh, choices right now or to solutions to, to try to, to get a ceasefire and try to de-escalate this conflict. And uh, that's why I, I think this analysis that, that Sweden is going to make, it has to take a lot of time. It's been being discussed for years in Sweden, and it's been a, a, a majority of the parties of the government, of the parliament have, have been opposed to uh, a NATO membership well, until recently. Agnes, uh, it would take minimally a year for Sweden or Finland to be admitted to NATO uh, if things uh, mm. go as they have in the past, which certainly isn't happening these days. What do you fear might happen in the interim, and what kind of organizing is going on right now in Sweden uh, uh, in the peace movement? And also for people to understand, if they think of Sweden, this peaceful nation, it is significant that, you know, here you have the Nobel Peace Prize um, uh, that started, you know, in Sweden. But it is one of the largest per capita exporters of weapons in the world. Yeah, that's true. And my biggest fear right now is not what would happen if we joined. It would be that we joined. I think it would be a really uh, bad decision, and it should definitely not be made now in this really tense time. Uh, I think uh, it would be much better for Sweden not to jo join. And also, as you said, we are a big uh, arms producer, and we're also supplying the, the um, parties of uh, the war in Yemen uh, with uh, a lot of arms at the moment. So the, the, yeah, the, the image you have of Sweden is not uh, always uh, what you expected. <laughs>